as a consumer, there are, you know, there's a continuum of support and interaction that I need. Uh, very rarely do I actually want to talk to a real human. Hi all, welcome to Engati CX. I am Drishti Shah from the Engati team and today we have the pleasure of welcoming John Andrews to our interview series. I would like to begin with just a quick intro of Engati. Engati is the world's leading multilingual no-code chatbot platform available across 14 channels with 30,000 bots created across 186 countries in every domain and use case. Engati has also been recognized as a top platform by inc.com, tech world, CIO and many others. We run the Engati blog, video channel and the Engati CX podcast, receiving upwards of 300,000 visitors annually. And now for our guest, John Andrews is a career marketeer in the consumer packaged goods and retail industries. He helps companies reimagine retail marketing, leveraging 20 plus years of experience in CPG marketing, coupled with 13 years of ground up social media knowledge to build new media formats in the shopper marketing space. He is also a founder of Collective Buyers Social Shopper Media Company and the creator of Walmart 11 Moms content marketing platform. He is a serial entrepreneur and entrepreneur that seeks to not only adapt to a rapidly changing marketing environment, but to help create and lead the future of the industry. So hi, John. We are really happy to have you on Engati. Hello, and thank you. I, I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Yeah. So beginning with the first question that I have for you is that what was the idea behind creating Photofy that is the world's easiest commercial content creation platform? Great question. Uh, so myself and my team are a second generation team. So we're actually not the creators of the product. Uh, however, we are now, as many companies who, who are startups, have done, we, we are uh, adapting the product to meet the needs of the marketplace. So something that I think a lot of entrepreneurs do. Uh, the original idea was started by a team of friends that had worked at another company to create uh, a photo editing app and a, a very uh, powerful photo editing app at, at that. And they did a good job. The, the company was uh, founded in 2013. Uh, and uh, today on the consumer side of our platform, it's an app that is free, uh, much like Engadi, uh, that you can, you can download from uh, any of the app stores. Um, and we have about 13 million downloads globally, um, and, 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 which is great. And it's a free product and, and most of our users uh, use our, our free assets. We do have things that, that people can buy. Um, our core business today, however, though, is, is we have uh, private versions, uh, uh, white label versions of our product that are available to enterprise users. So companies use our platform to give their employees and partners and consultants uh, creative assets from which to make social media content. And we think that this is a really important thing today. So uh, a company like Remax, which is a large um, real estate company, uses our platform to give its agents and, um, and, and other partners the ability to make content via their social channels, uh, via uh, text, uh, email, uh, any platform that they may be using, that provides them consistency in branding, but then also the personalization uh, of their own voice in the content that they're making. That's great, that is really great. Uh, so how do you think has mobile revolutionized marketing and what automation trends will we see in the future and especially in the retail industry? Sure, wow, that's a, that's a big question, but but really, really powerful. So, so mobile's changed our entire life, right? So, so how we interact uh, on a day-to-day -day basis um, it, it is now, you know, literally with us in the palm of our hands all the time. And I, I think that marketing has has followed that, um, and in some ways um, successfully, and in some ways not. And, and maybe we'll talk about that first. 
I, I think the problem with marketing in mobile environments today is, is the constant uh, uh, push marketing that still exists, which, which is from an old model. So push existed when we had magazines and TV and all these sit back media, right? Uh, today, many marketers still try to push on a very personal, you know, uh, I, I think uh, a third to a half of, of humans sleep with this device, you know, so it's a, it's a very personal device. Um, probably not a good environment to be continually interrupting people with, with messaging. However, the, the flip side of that is anything that I want to do to connect with a brand or a company or a retailer or whatever, I can do instantly from this device. So marketing now becomes very much a, an always own activity that uh, I can get help. So think about your, your product, think about a chatbot. Um, you know, I might need help uh, with a retailer that I'm visiting or a restaurant in knowing uh, what, what hours they're, they're now open uh, as, as they're adapting to life with COVID or whatever, right? So, so marketing now becomes, is very much a, a pull or a need state uh, activity in, in which you're helping me as a, as a customer or a consumer um, connect with your brand when I want to, um, not necessarily when you want to, right? Because you really don't know what I'm doing right now and, and I might, uh, it, you know, very much be interrupted by a message you're trying to send me uh, about a pair of shoes. I don't care. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not. Uh, I, I'm, I'm having a conversation with you right now. I'm not shopping for shoes. So. Yeah. That, that's absolutely true. That, that is actually like uh, you are not pushing the message that the customers want to hear. More of like, what do you want to sell? So that is something uh, not in alignment in marketing even today yeah yeah and I, I just think it's i think it's what marketers have always done right we you know our job is to market it is to tell you about what we have to sell well yeah. guess what I, I got it you know I, I i get it but um i don't always need uh messaging i know where to find you mm -hmm. if i need you right and, and what I want from marketing is when I am in that, that need state, when I am in a shopping mindset or even an information gathering mindset, I would like to have content where I can find it. Or I would like for you to participate in maybe the conversations that I'm having, but not in a selling mode because everything is not a sell, right? It, it, you know. Yeah. It is more like if you help them three to four times, then maybe they will come to you with a viewpoint that you know what this is the support I want and I want to buy this product. Yeah, yeah. I think I think a great example. Um, I don't know if you followed what Nike did during uh, COVID, but but I thought it was extremely smart. So Nike um, Nike has a, an app that it has that you can subscribe to that has um, personal training on it. So it's got different types of classes that you can take. So during COVID, instead of saying you know, hey, buy Nikes because you know the, what what I really need in a lockdown in my home is a new pair of shoes. Um, Nike said we're going to make this free so that you know if you can't go to the gym, if you can't do other things, we're we're going to support you by by offering this this content about you know staying fit, staying healthy. And I just thought, wow, what a brilliant way to participate in the reality of my life right now. Yes. And and then, and then, as I need you, as I uh, get ready to, I don't know, go back to the gym, or I start, you know, I've I've uh, started running more because running is a solitary activity that that you can do and and uh, probably uh, stay pretty COVID free, right? <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe I I got a new pair of shoes, and actually I did. I ordered a, a new pair of uh, of Nikes um, just to work out. So so again, it's just that. How can I be valuable as a marketer to the shopper without necessarily always pushing buy now? Yes, 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 absolutely. That, that's how you create trust and maybe a buying intent later. Yeah. Of course. 
so with the digital transformation in the picture how will retail industry change and uh, you know what role will tech play in these changes it, it it's a it's an interesting question i think that's different for different industries um, i'm actually uh, in the process almost finished uh, uh, writing a book called retail relevancy with my business partner a gentleman named ted rubin uh, and we've worked together for, for years and been involved in, in retail and brands and, and other businesses together. And we think are thinking a lot about how retail changes because of digital um, and, and because of automation, right? So, so you start to think about, um, you know, I'm a big user of Amazon's replenishment function. So um, products that I purchase on a regular basis, uh, toothpaste and shampoo and razors and you know, whatever, um, I ha we have automatically, they show up from Amazon. Uh, yes. Very much like, like our coffee consumption, we use Nespresso, uh, the, the Nestle platform. Again, my, my coffee orders are automated from Nespresso. So they just show up. I don't actually shop for them. I could adjust them very easily if I need to online. But typically, once you get the adjustment period set, um, you know that that's easy. I'll never go back to shopping for those items the way I did. You know, and, and I think what what we're seeing now, I think COVID um, leapfrogged us five years in terms of of that process for a lot of shoppers. So you're starting to think about, you know, I know in the, in the States in, in March, over a third of households used online grocery um, ordering and pickup, right? Yeah. So they didn't have to go in a store and whatever. Prior to March, that number had been somewhere around seven or 8%. Yeah. So, so you start to think about that. How many new families were introduced, tried that experience and said, Wow, this is much easier than going to the grocery store. This shop, this frees up time for me. I'm going to use that, and I, I think you're seeing those kinds of things happen in many industries now. Right. Yeah, that is there. It it has changed the uh, you know kind of a revolution in what we used to do before and what is going to be further. Yeah. So, sure. So sure. And, and I think what I think what COVID did was was you know by necessity uh people needed to try new models mm -hmm. right um we we have a restaurant that that we like for sushi mm -hmm. and um our restaurants here in north carolina were uh were shut down uh during the first phase of, of our lockdown and they did a very good job of providing curbside pickup and and in fact, they, uh, you know, when you would place your order, you would pay for the order uh, over the phone, which was great. Um, so there's no, no contact there. And then they would ask you what kind of car you were driving and they would bring your, you bring your order out and place it in the car. And I, I, I told my wife, I'm like, well, I hope they keep doing this because this is the easiest thing ever. <laughs> you know? So I don't, you know, I don't, I, I'm short of delivery, it's, it's, uh, it's fantastic. But, um, you know, just small adjustments to reflect the way that people shop and the way that people interact with brands are now happening much faster than they probably would have happened without this crisis. Yes, COVID has accelerated that change, yeah. Sure. So how do you think chatbots can help uh, in the business of retail sectors creating a seamless customer journey? Yeah, it, it's interesting. Um, I, I interact with chatbots more on a personal basis uh, because of, of a couple platforms that I use. Um, one is Robinhood, which is, a, you may be familiar with an online trading platform. Uh, uh, it, it is their chat functionality is fantastic. So a lot of the activities that, that I do in Robinhood from, from placing orders for stocks or options or whatever are, are governed by chat interfaces, right? And I had not spent 
Um, other than some, some um, uh, you know, minor interactions with chatbots, maybe on websites or something, like, but nothing this interactive and engaged. And it really started me thinking about how can, you know, how can my company, how can, how can Photify, how can we use chatbots just to help people make content? We, um, you know, we pride ourselves on, on our platform being the easiest way to make beautiful branded content for non-creatives. So our, our platform is really designed for someone who is not a graphic designer or a creative or whatever, but wants to make beauty, you know, beautiful branded content. And we find a lot of people still struggle, as easy as we believe the platform is, a lot of people still struggle to be able to use it. Um, a chatbot seems to me to be a perfect place to interface in between our personal human-based customer service and the the you know the videos the other training materials the, the things that we have and support how could a chatbot uh sink into that model that, that that's i mean that's the way i look at it just from a, a personal standpoint a personal interaction standpoint mm, but that's how it it fits into the models yeah and and I think, you know, as a consumer, there are, you know, there's a continuum of support and interaction that I need. Uh, very rarely do I actually want to talk to a real human, right? You know, I just, I want to be able to uh, book my airline tickets and, and, uh, and, and now if I have my stock trading and, and you know, online uh, ordering and reservations, I don't, I don't need to talk to a human very often I, I would i like the option if i have it but frequently most of the things that i want to do um thousands of hundreds of thousands if not millions of people want to do the same thing so there are automated processes that can take care of that and actually just make it easier for me right yeah. uh so so i think there's this this continuum of, of service that that is that is needed, and I, and I think it's a uh, it's a content play that that begun that begins to become very interactive and intuitive based on the learning from everyone who's using the platform. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It it becomes very easy because I do not want to wait for like two minutes to connect to a human agent, which will just hold my call for more five minutes and I will not get <laughs> my problem solved at all. So, yeah, very frustrating. Right. Well, and, and I think you know I I think that um, our expectation levels from technology have taught us that, right? And then you start to think about voice interaction. And how a chatbot becomes, you know, a, a, a voice-enabled uh, uh, platform, it becomes pretty interesting, you know, because I, I feel like sometimes when I'm I'm uh, talking to a chatbot, there's a there's a good, you know, sense of conversing with another person, even though I I know it's not a person. Yeah, yeah, it it gives a human-like feel. Yeah. Sure. And I think that's only going to get better as the the uh, the systems learn yes. um, how to how to converse uh, like humans or or maybe even better than humans because some humans aren't that great at conversing. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Right. So, concluding, do you have any other thoughts that you would like to leave the audience with? Um, no, I, I just think that, um, you, you know, what, what this time has shown us is uh, ch change is inevitable. Change is going to happen. Um, and, and thinking about how we manage change as companies that are providing products and services and, and other things uh, versus resist it or, 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 or avoid it. Um, it, it is something that great businesses and, and business leaders are, are trying to do. Yeah. So thank you so much, John, for your time. I think the insights and the examples that you have shared were really insightful and valuable and uh, the audience will really enjoy this interview. Wonderful. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity again. We'll be back with a new episode with a brand new expert soon, so stay tuned and we'll see you around for the next one. Goodbye.